beats that go along with it. Uh, yeah, it was gonna have three, I thought that was a little extravagant. So I turned one into a You guys are gonna get pissed at me when you don't remember what I said. Um, it did have three, so I turned one into a video because, like I said, three spreadsheets seemed a little bit excessive. Um, so anyway, have at it. Some of it won't make sense right now, some of it will. You'll know what does make sense. Like, you'll, the first question for sure makes sense, or at least you have the tools right now to do the first question. When you get into the American Heart Association question, you won't, that won't make any sense until next week. So I wouldn't start that one yet. Um, actually, yeah, just start, if, if you want to get into it, just start the first question. The rest of it, as we go through the next couple of weeks, the rest of it will check off, check off, check off. Cool? All right. So if you want to get into it, start that first. So let's, let's make a move towards, let's make a move towards the back half of the course. So, bikes are a big part of my life, so I figured that was a fun, that would be a fun data set for us to dive into. And you might not care about bikes, and that's okay. But I was thinking to myself, last term, I want to get into the next part of the course. And I, I mean, I gave you a data sheet with a bunch of stuff on it, and we could totally work through that. But I figured to motivate it a little bit better, I, I, I try to always find stuff that actually, like, rings true in my life. So. Uh, I recently got a cyclocross bike, which is what this is the uh, the model of bike I got. It's called a GT CX2, I believe. No. I got it for what's that? Oh, that's just the stock picture. They don't sell them on pedals. I found the wrong line. Yeah, usually when you buy a bike, they don't come with pedals. That's um, weird. Yeah. Say again. That's weird. Well, what's interesting is I, I think I think a reason I, I don't know this for a fact, but I know whatever I subscribe to a magazine called Dirt Rag 2, which does mountain bike reviews every month. And they always review five or six different bikes, and they always quote the weight of the bike, and it's always without pedals. And I, I, I think it's because, I don't know this for sure, but the big thing now is light, 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 lighter, 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 lighter. The bikes that we used to ride back when we were 12, you know, they made of like steel or iron, right? The Huffies and the Schwins are made out of iron, they weigh like 45 pounds. Now these bikes weigh like 15 pounds, and they always say without pedals. Like, how much more can a set of pedals weigh? And what I'm realizing is, Pedals aren't necessarily keeping track with the weight losses the bikes are keeping track with. So the pedals actually do contribute a sizable chunk of weight back on the bikes now. I think. I think that's why they leave them off. Also, the other thing too is, um, anybody ride bikes relatively commonly or relatively often? Does anybody use clipless pedals when they when they ride their bikes? Like the ones where you put the cleats in the shoe and you snap into the pedal? There's like five or six different brands of those. So. Rather than just giving you a pair of Shimano SPDs, they give you the option of putting your own pedals on their times or speed plays or uh, Crank Brothers or Shimano or whatever else. So I think there's a couple of a couple of reasons as to why they don't. I wouldn't suggest riding them. Uh, or just flat, or just platform pedals, which are also fun. Just put a pair of normal pedals where your normal shoes, put them on there and go. But there's all kinds of there's no discussion in that um, as to whether whether you should or shouldn't use those. But anyway, buy has pedals. I put them on there. It makes it a little bit easier to ride to work. Uh, but what didn't make it easy to ride were the brakes. So the brakes on the, that came with this bike stock are called cantilever brakes. I think the next slide has a picture of them. Nope, I know. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, so if you think about your bike and the kind of brakes it has, there's all there's different kinds of brakes too. You might remember back in the day there was an old kickback brake. Uh, it was a coaster brake. I've seen friends break their legs on those now because they're not used to them. So if you backpedaled, it would lock the back wheel up. Um, mountain biking was apparently born in, uh, in um, Marin County, California, on this thing called the Repack Race. These guys used to take their Schwins, they ride them up this big dirt road up Mount, Mount Tam, and then they go screaming down this trail on, imagine, imagine like a 1963 Schwinn and putting it at the top of Mount Bachelor and riding it to the bottom. And going as fast as you possibly could. People used to like fall off going like 35 miles an hour on these like cast iron bikes. And it was called the repack race because they would slam the brakes so much on the way down that all the grease would burn off. And they'd have to repack the hub with grease again when they were done. They get so hot they could cook bacon on it when they got to the bottom. And I, I, I used to think that was BS. I'm like, that is such crap. I went to Sun Valley, Idaho uh, two summers ago for with a mountain bike through my friends and I had disc brakes on my mountain bike. We descended this one, it was um What's, what's the ski mountain now in Sun Valley? Uh, I can't remember what it's called right now. But we, we took a trail down from the top to the bottom of that. And it took us like 25 minutes to get to the top to the bottom. We got to the bottom and I dripped water on my disc brake and it immediately evaporated. So I'm like, okay, it does get hot. It's kind of the point. <laughs> Stuff does get hot. So you got disc brakes, you got coaster brakes. Anybody have V brakes on their bike? Maybe you don't even know you have V brakes on your bike. 
Uh, lead brakes. I'll show you a picture of those too, Cassie. Well, these things came with cantilevers. Cantilevers. Well, let me show you a picture. So cantilevers are these guys right here. These are called V-brakes. These are called cantilevers. Now, if you're looking at a non-biker would look at that and go, why the hell would you call this a V-brake? It's shaped like a V. Why wouldn't you call this a U-brake? Well, actually, they call these U-brakes. So good questions. I don't have good answers for them. I have no good answers for any of those questions, which I think you're thinking of right now. This is what came with my bike. I got nervous. If you've seen my commute, which I don't think you bet you have, I, 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 I ride through Sawyer Park, and then up there's a really, a really slender single track that I go up on Aubrey Butte, and then up over the top of the Butte, and then I come back that way too. Going up isn't the problem, it's coming back. A few times last year when I got the bike, I crashed coming home because the brakes weren't stopping my bike quick enough. I'd be coming into these hairpin turns, like, I got this, and I would like gently touch on the brakes, which disc brakes on a mountain bike, anybody have disc brakes on their mountain bike? Yeah, disc brakes, you touch the levers, boom, you stop. It's kind of terrifying, actually. When I first got disc brakes, I go over the handlebars quite a bit because they stopped so quickly. And I was used to that. So I'd be coming down this, I mean, down this very sharp single track into a hairpin turn, and I'm touching the brakes, and I'm not slowing down. And then I grab the brakes, and I'm not slowing down. And then I pull them all the way to the handlebar, and now I'm petrified because I'm going 20 miles an hour towards a hairpin turn, and I realize I'm not going to stop, so I lay the bike down and just jump off of it, rather than run off the trail into the river. So finally I said, there's got to be a better way than this. There's got to be a better way than these cantilever brakes. So I did some research. I did some research online, and what I started noticing was Cyclocross uh, racers were posting to these online forums about cantilever brakes and how they were having the same problems I was. They weren't stopping them correctly. And they started asking, what if we could switch to other kinds of brakes? Now, there are other kinds. I mentioned coaster brakes, which is the kickback hub. Nobody puts those on mountain bikes. Because number one, it's fun to backpedal. It's actually convenient to backpedal sometimes. Like if you're going to hit a rock to pull your pedal back and not hit the rock is nice. Also, if you're not used to them, like I haven't ridden a coaster brake bike since, I don't know, 1982, probably, and I'm not used to them anymore. When I do ride my wife's Schwinn, and I have to like ride it around to test out the chain and make sure everything's working right, I almost fall off of it because I'll try to backpedal and stop me on the road and fall over. So those are out. Disc brakes are out because the bike that I have doesn't have mounts. There's no mounts here or here to put discs on. So those were out. I can't put disc brakes on. I'd love to put disc brakes on. Now, you get a new fork, but I didn't want to do that already. So the only choice I had was V-brakes, which are those, those ones I showed you. The, 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 they're parallel. Um, and I read a bunch of forums, and a bunch of the forums said you could do it. A bunch of forums said you couldn't do it. A bunch of forums said you could do it if you do all these goofy adjustments. So I said, oh, what the hell, I'll just give it a shot. I'll give it a whirl. I'll try out what are called mini V-brakes, which seem like the best possible fit. And so that's what these guys are right here. That's the brand I put on, Tetro RX5. I've since upgraded them to better ones that stop even better. Uh, but so this is the original brakes. Here are the new ones. Now, the methodology I used to test them, because what I did was I wanted to see if they actually worked. So before I put the new brakes on, I left the cantilever brakes on, and I dragged, here's our house right here, point A. This driveway is that one right there. It's at about a, I'm gonna say it's about a 12 or 13 percent grade driveway. I felt really terrible for my neighbors in the winter. Mm -hmm. It is west facing, which is kind of nice. It picks up some sun and thaws out pretty quickly, but I've seen them slide down it in their car. But I said, hell of it, great test track for me. So what I would do was, I'd ride to the top of their driveway where that car is parked right there, and then I'd get into a track stand, which is when you're vertical with your feet in the pedals with the brakes on, and then I just let go and let gravity take me down and accelerate under the force of gravity to whatever speed I got to. I didn't, I didn't track the speed like we did in 105. But. And as soon as I hit that section of the curb right there, I had a tape measure running across the road. When I hit that, when I hit that, I would start braking in a controlled fashion. I had my son help me. He would go out and he would mark where my hub lined up on the tape measure. So I would get like a total stopping distance, if you will. Make sense so far? He would run out and say, God, Daddy! And he'd put his finger down and he'd mark where my hub was. You could see he was always usually pretty off. I'd write down the right, I'd write down the right marking, and he would mark whatever he wanted to. So, make sense so far? So I did it a bunch of times with the cantilever brakes, took those measurements down. Then I put the other brakes on, other brakes, the V brakes on, and then tested the exact same thing on the exact same day. I ordered the brakes, actually I got the brakes in town at, uh, at Hutch's, um, and put everything on immediately after that way I had the same pavement conditions, same temperature, same everything. The bike was in the same condition. I don't have to worry about any control of any of those variables. Here's the results I got. Here's the results I got. 
That's the stopping distances up top. Stopping distances at the bottom. I have to apologize. Max helped me lay the tape measure out. The tape measure has on one side inches and feet. On the other side, tenths of feet. That's the top 21.1 inches. Or excuse me, 21.1 feet, 20.3 feet, 20.2 feet, and so forth. The bottom ones are in feet and inches. He laid the tape out. I was going to get back in the same place. So we had, to, we had to correct for that too. So my first question for you guys is, was it a worthwhile investment? If so, how worthwhile? So I got some really quick answers when I said it wasn't a worthwhile investment. Yeah. And you say that because assuming that this was the right thing to test, it was the only thing I think to test was stopping distance. It looks like my afters, the linear pool, many of these, actually stop me in less distance than the cantilevers do. Good! Fantastic. Now, how significant is the result? This is where it ties into 244, right? Anybody can look at that and go, okay, beautiful. If I look at the absolute lowest distance for the befores, it's 19.4 feet, yes? 19.4 feet. The longest distance in the afters is below that, isn't it? 18 feet, 7 inches, I see that over there. 14, 10. But if I want to go to the worst case scenario for the, for the better breaks is 18, 7. 18, 7. So even, the, even the, the longest it took me to stop with the new breaks is less distance than the shortest it took me to stop with the, with the cantilevers. So it looks like, they're, looks like they're doing a better job. They're going to be two different confidence intervals, I think. Depends on the variability and if the intervals actually catch each other. So the question I have is, let's deal with this. Let's get this into our machines, because I want to I play with this with you guys. I want to play with this with you guys. Let's, let's settle on a conversion, too. Um, we got to convert, we got to convert them when they're talking to each other the right way. I think it might be easier to convert these guys to these guys. So we'll do that together. We'll do that together here. Turn the camera off. I don't need to have that recorded.